Okay, today I'm going to show you the drop-in lamination with, on a transtibial socket. Here we have a, a socket, a mold that was already has an anchor on it. We're going to go ahead and show you the anchor way. Getting ready, prep for lamination or cast is nice and smooth. Um, so we're going to just set this in place, medial side, put a little bit of clay in that center hole, grab a real thin pantyhose uh, sheer vacuum nylon. So we have our vacuum nylon on, over, pulled over our cast and over our fabrication dummy. What we're going to do is take a piece of tape right here, just over the top of this, pull that tape all the way around your, your nylons there. So when we pull our PVA bag, we'll have enough space to bring that down and tape it right to this spot. So cut our nylon right above our tape. So a razor blade sometimes works a little bit easier. You can get a, a tighter cut on that. Put our PVA bag on top of this now. And I'm gonna take my heat gun, shrink this bag down a little bit so it's nice and taut over top of that fabrication dummy. Moving that heat gun around, it's going to shrink that bag right to our fabrication dummy. All right, so now we got our bag on here. If you want to, you can go ahead and draw a vacuum on this thing. And you can see that pulling in nice and tight around there. It's exactly what we're looking for. If you want to, you can tape it or tie it off so you keep your vacuum on there. And this just kind of helps you um, tape it off from here. Just go right over to the edge of this fabrication dummy here. Just one layer nice and tight around that top. And then you can go ahead and take your razor blade or scissors and cut your bag all the way around to the edge of that fabrication dummy. And now we got our tape on there. And go ahead and give this a little pull down around that edge. And then you get that down enough. We'll go ahead and put another piece of tape around there to seal off that bag. And you can see here our tape is over that leading edge, sealing off our PVA bag on top. Um, I've already put some compound four. Um, really helps remove that center puck piece for removal. Grab some clay or some putty and go around this edge that's exposed here and just seal that, that part off. We don't get any resin leaking inside of our fabrication dummy. Let's put a little acetone on a rag and just kind of clean up that excess clay that's in there. You know, I start with just uh, one sheer vacuum nylon. Put one of those over top and I'll tie and reflect it to the distal end or to the proximal edge. Give it a little twist. You can also thread it if that's what you want to do. And same thing here when we're doing our test socket, we want to expose these four holes here um, so we can access them when we put our glue plate on and our four screws when we get ready to laminate. So now we got our nylon on there. We just want to go ahead and get some uh, carbon tape. Um, typically, um, this is basically a secondary insurance just on the distal end over our fabrication dummy. So I'll go ahead and I'll put lay two of these over um, ML and AP. So I got plenty of length here. We don't need to go all the way to the proximal edge on this. So I'll go ahead and take these strips and spray glue those. So where our push button is exposed, or where our push button is gonna, gonna be exposed when we grind the face of it, just wanna kinda go around that. That way we don't have to grind it and we're putting the strength still over top of it instead of just cutting it off there. Now we just want to do a couple layers of kyoto composite we do. Um, certainly the same thing, carbon, um, if, you, if that's what you're using in your shop. So what I do is I'm going to do two layers of this. I'm assuming this guy's a pretty active guy. Uh, he's a heavier weight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do two layers of kyoto composite today. And I have some six inch here, six inch cow composite. We're gonna lay on there. And I'm gonna find that center of this fabrication dummy. 
I'll just go ahead and tighten my thread down around my composite. And I'm not gonna make that super tight to where everything bunches up in the center there. That way we're not gonna get any saturation in the center of that socket. So I just keep it nice and loose. Um, so now I got that tied off. I want to go ahead and kind of move that composite around to expose these holes that we have here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the rest of this material and reflect it on top of it. And do the same thing again, is find those, those four holes again. If you guys have somebody that's a little bit heavier, maybe add one more layer of composite or carbon, whatever you're using, or a couple more carbon strips to reinforce that distal end. Two layers of composite with two layers of carbon strips is plenty of strength for just about anybody out there. I'm gonna go ahead and put one more vacuum nylon over this before I do my our five hole plate, which is gonna sandwich, kind of sandwich this material all on top of itself. It's always a good idea to, you know, put some grease on these screws so they will come out easy. You get those nice and taut. You don't want them super tight. We want to go ahead and put a little bit of clay or, or putty in those screw heads. So again, so we can remove those a lot easier later without fighting the lamination. If you feel like uh, two composite isn't going to be strong enough and you want a nice low cost way of reinforcing this, um, we go ahead and add one or two layers of nylon stockinette. I'm going to go ahead and do two flex stretch nylon. These flex stretch are a little bit thicker than your standard just vacuum nylon, but they do leave a nice smooth finish at the end. Okay, so now while well, you guys weren't looking, I went ahead and threw this, uh, this mermaid fabric on. I've had my PVA bag and my towel rolled up wet, so it's nice and pliable. So now we're going to go ahead and throw that on here. I always put my posterior seam in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that vacuum and draw that PVA down. And today we're gonna use um, epoxy resin. Um, typically it, it's, it stays nice and clear. Um, doesn't yellow out like your typical AMEs. And they're, they're a lot tougher resin than your typical AME resin. And the, the epoxy resin we use is by a prosthetic research specialist. untie your nylon there and just kind of let that soak into your material. Don't get in a big hurry and push this down right away. Just kind of let that material get saturated with the resin. Now we can go ahead and push it down and try to shoot it nice and even around that fabrication dummy the best I can. I really want to kind of massage that resin into your material, especially with this kind of thicker fabric here that we have on top, this, this mermaid material here. We kind of want to work that into all our layers so we're getting good saturation around our fabrication dummy and into our, our socket. So again, I'm, I'm working this material, I'm pushing my thumbs and working that material into uh, the resin into my material really well. We're gonna need some more. And then when I get to this point, I have plenty, plenty of resin in here. I'm gonna go ahead and you can see this kind of pooling up. It's just uh, excess resin we don't need. So you can either take your nylon or a string paracord and you can work that material back up. Or if you want to saturate some more, you go ahead and work that material down. I'm not stringing too hard because we don't want our material to start wrinkling up on itself. Again, I'm just kind of bringing all this excess pooling of resin that we have around this fabrication dummy and bringing it down. Uh, are your resins massaged into your material? I'll go ahead and tie this thing off. I'm going to get all this resin as much as I can out of there. 
heat a little bit more. Bring that down if you want. You're gonna get a little bit of pulling around where that uh, fabrication dummy is, where your uh, push button goes into. Um, maybe a little excess resin there around the, the lock. And if you want to, you can go ahead and get rid of some of that by taking a piece of tape. And I'll start just at the top edge of our fabrication dummy. I'll go ahead and kind of pull that taunt. You don't want it tight because then your bag and your material is going to start wrinkling. And we're going to go ahead, I cut the top of the socket off already and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to grind the bottom off and then expose your, your dummy for your push button here. Just want to grind that material flat here. Also the same here. We're gonna grind this bottom off, all this resin and material, take that off. So we are flat on our five hole plate with our screws and then we can expose our screws and remove our screws as well. So now we've ground the bottom of this, exposed our four screws on our five hole plate. We now gotta remove these screws as well. We've exposed our dummy on our fabrication dummy for our push button here. Now we want to remove this dummy as well. And now we have our five hole plate to remove. And what I usually do is get a, a screwdriver and, and the blunt end of the screwdriver and just lightly tap the edge of your lamination here. And there you get that five hole plate, I'll just fall right out like that. First we want to go back to the grinder and grind this completely flush to our screw heads so we don't have any of this extra material sticking up. Okay, so now we're flush on our bottom. We've removed that excess material that was down here. I'm just gonna take it over to the Troutman here and buff the, the top of this to make it nice and smooth. And what I have here is a uh, red buffing cone. So this is just gonna get these edges, take that rough spots out of it or any sharpness on the edge there. You can certainly break these casts out, you know, if you feel like it's not gonna pull. Um, so there's a couple tools we use and one's uh, to attach to a pyramid and the other one would be just a screw right on. And two screws on this is plenty enough to uh, just pull the socket from the, from the mold. And this one's gonna pull very easy. Um, you get some sockets with some undercuts in it. It could be kind of a pain and you, you'd probably rather break them out. I have this three quarter inch head screw. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, you can see down there. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this screw into that fabrication dummy. Okay, so now we got our three quarter inch uh, wrench on our, um, our screw to extract this. We're just gonna go ahead and thread it down. Might need a longer extension on some of these longer sockets, but so far so good. What it's gonna do is start pushing the distal end of the socket and helping that. So now we've gotten our, our um, Tooling dummy, I'm gonna, we got it loose enough, I can just pull the rest of it out here. And what we have is our voided space for our actual lock and connector to go into. Here we have our test socket still. I'm gonna remove this one from the test socket. Um, this is also a removal training as well for your test socket. When you have your test socket to your definitive, we're going to remove our push button and our lock plate here. Remove this from the test socket and put it into our definitive socket here. So you can see there, just give it a couple of good taps and then your lock will fall right out. Um, so now we want to put our lock into our definitive socket. So, so now we do the same thing as we did in the test socket when we Put that on. Um, we want to align our holes up all together and our push button with our side hole. 
I got my four holes lined and I just want to put my uh, four hole pyramid on. Um, I'll start with one screw, get that aligned. When I start to tighten them, it's going to draw that lock into the bottom of the socket. Start cranking these down. So I'm get a little bit of, you know, even pull and it's going to evenly pull this, draw this lock into the socket. Let me pull these in and I will torque wrench Loctite these later. Um, always Loctite your screws. Always torque them to uh, your manufacturer settings on, on the screws and the componentry. And here we have our hole for our push button. We're going to go ahead, like we did earlier with this, go ahead. We have our three, three springs here and we have our push button valve. We have our um, lock plate here. And so we want to go ahead and uh, put our lock plate into our lamination. And we slide that in just like you would with the, the regular air lock. And we'll drop our screw into place there. And now we have our valve body with our push button. So we'll go ahead and drop that in. Make sure you're not cross threading this. You want to keep it nice and even. Okay, so now we have our lock. We have a pin we can test our lock with. And that pin is holding very well. So push that out. We have our lock disengaged. Let's test it again. There's eight clicks there. So our lock is working great. It's engaged. Um, we have our four hole pyramid on the bottom. Everything on the socket looks good. Um, all I need to do now is trim the edges um, and probably trim or smooth this edge up a little bit. So I'm going to take the lock back out and I will trim or smooth those edges and do the top. I'm not going to show you that today.